Hi, everyone. It's Bob Perkins bringing you another episode of First Know Your Buyer. I'm with Crystal Knows. Uh, today's guest is CJ Webster. CJ, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's great to have you. We've known each other for a number of years through uh, AISP, um, and I've done some uh, looking up of your podcast. You're really doing quite a bit. I know you specialize in consulting, strategic services into the uh, legal technology. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Yeah, definitely will. So uh, I am the uh, founder and president of C. Webster Consulting. Uh, we focus specifically on empowering legal tech companies and data analytic companies with solutions to help them win clients, grow customer base, and attract investors. That's great. Now, specifically, you and I had chatted recently about what does it really mean to understand who you're selling to, right? And you have a process you've been working on, which goes beyond the quick three-minute research on LinkedIn, which is great, right? But you can only learn so much. So we're going to do a two-part series here. You're going to tell us how you prepare. Week number two, we're going to come back. We're going to see how sales reps can put that into action to help improve their sales. So let's go ahead and get started with the, the first part today. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to talk to you about it. It does begin with uh, LinkedIn, similar to some of the uh, previous conversations that you've had. But I take it a step deeper, leveraging AI and leveraging ChatGPT, leveraging Claude, leveraging Bard. Uh, my preferred AI right now at this point for doing this particular process is with ChatGPT. And I am a person that actually has a subscription where I pay the $20 uh, per month mm -hmm. to have uh, access to ChatGPT4. But you can do it with the free service. Yeah. And the way that I do it is I take a look at, you know, the different, like most of us in sales, you have your targeted list of prospects that you're going after. And you're trying to really figure out, you know, what's keeping them up at night. What's the universal truth that they have that they're trying to work towards. What I like to do is I take a look at five different individuals on that particular list that I have. And I go on LinkedIn, like many of you, but then I don't stop at LinkedIn. I look from a lens of where, where did they go to school? What type of businesses did they leave? What are they, who are they servicing and what potential problems do they have? I start plugging that information into chat GPT. And the reason why I'm doing it is that I'm having chat GPT take those five different personas, bring them together as one so that I can have a simulated role play and have a larger understanding of the potential issues that they may face. Yeah, that that's really good. I, I love it when you said you don't leave it at LinkedIn, you go a step further. Why is it so important? You mentioned universal truth. I've used that in the past, but why is it so important to understand you don't even know these people, right? You pick five, but you, you have a pretty good, you end up with a pretty good understanding of what they struggle with. Why is that important? I think it's important because when you're leveraging a tool like ChatGPT for this, it pushes you. So during your prompts, and you know, we can talk about prompting as well, but you know, I will be upfront as I'm creating this particular prompt in ChatGPT, where I will say that I'm going to give you five different individuals and I'm wanting you to bring them together as one collective persona. Yeah. And then I want you to think about the questions that you would have if you were an individual that went to this school, leading this type of sales force, selling this type of solution at an enterprise level, right? Going to these type of clients and these type of customers in this type of industry. Chat GPT will come back to me and say, well, here's an observation based on what you've delivered to me in your prompts. And so it helps me get a lot more focused on my thinking and in my approach and understanding of what they are, you know, what they're facing from a concern standpoint and how they're tackling the market and how my solution can particularly help them do it easier. This is great. You mentioned the word concerns earlier. You mentioned the word there are universal struggles, right? When you know that, it, or at least have a good idea what that might be, of course, you have to qualify that, do your discovery, which brings us to next week, right? Next week, you're going to take this universal truth, their struggle, their concern, and then you're going to go a layer deeper and give ammunition to the sales reps. I know we talked a little bit about knowing their personality. We're yep. going to do that. But I, before we jump into next week, I do have a question for you. When you put these five different VPs of whatever 
into chat GPT. Tell me a universal truth or a universal concern that you see quite a bit. Well, I'll tell you this first and foremost, I just make sure that I'm clear with how to do it because I don't want people to think it's uh, it, that, that it's challenging. It's not challenging to do what hmm. I'm doing at all. Hmm. All it takes is just you having the uh, time just to build it out with the different prompts. And I will, I will tell you this, I name, I will name that one persona. Like most Good recently goodness. as a homage to my older brother, Troy, I will name it Troy. <laughs> and so <laughs> when I'm having that conversation with those five uh, particular personas it's being put together and I'm like, okay, Troy, tell me what's keeping you up at night. So one of the things that I am seeing that's keeping Troy up at night is the, it is, you know, just uh, concerns about the economy yeah. and, and threat of inflation, yeah. as well as how do we drive the uh, growth that we're seeing across various industries coming out of COVID, right? And how do we drive that growth while at the same time knowing that there is a huge push for artificial intelligence solutions in the market? And so where do we get that particular budget, right? And so, of course, it's on us as sales professionals to you know push the revenue, to be able to have that type of budget that we can lift and shift for those hiring, you know, of that talent that we need, those, you know, PhD level, you know, computer scientists to help us with our AI solutions that we're bringing to the market. You, you know, speaking about COVID, things are different today than they were five years ago. The truths, the concerns, the challenges are different. So you owe it to yourself to really take a deep look at that. This has been fantastic. CJ, just tell us a little bit of what we can expect next week. So for next week, you know, what we're definitely going to get into is the application process, right? It's the delivery. It's how to actually message it. So now that you can see the world, right, you're looking back and you can see the universe. You have an understanding of the universe. You've used ChatGPT. You use LinkedIn, right? You have Troy, who you're talking to in a <laughs> simulated role play, right? So now how do you actually have the conversation with the real Troy, right? Are you going to talk about data? Yeah, or yeah. are you going to have a story that you're telling that leads through a narrative to keep Troy interested? That's what we're going to get into. We call that adaptive selling at Crystal. And yeah, I know you're familiar with Crystal, but uh, you're going to touch on that a little bit too. You know, one size doesn't fit all. And I think it's the, the wave of the future of how salespeople are going to effectively communicate with a wide variety of personas. So CJ, thanks so much today. I know this was a bit longer. We're going to get right into it. If you're in sales leadership next week, come on back. You're going to get some gems, some tips on how to communicate more effectively. CJ, thanks so much. Thank you.